It's an honor and a pleasure to be amongst people who share our understanding of the current cultural and political climate. Together, we have an interest for a real and radical change to the status quo. For years, we have been meeting and discussing. We organize activities and deliver speeches where we share our thoughts and concerns. However, I believe that despite this, we have never really strived to seek what unites us. We haven't really done our best to pursue and highlight our common denominators. And it is precisely on this that we should concentrate. On our similarities and the common ground that binds us for the sake of unity. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lowell's fifth speech at the New Right Conference here in London. He has been explaining, elucidating the concept of Imperium Europa year after year. An idea that gives our people the right to be. An idea of regions and peoples. <coughs> Dominia instead of artificial nation states under the protective shroud of an imperium which concerns itself only with five main prerogatives. Race, freed from guilt and protected from miscegenation. High culture, halting this degeneration and finding ourselves. High politics, a far cry from this majority mediocrity that has become the norm. Territory, never to be ceded or abused. Spirituality, which is definitely not for the masses. For previous talks, we invite you to visit our website www.imperium-europa.org Where are we now at this point in the struggle? What is this new force in Brussels, the AENM, Alliance of European Nationalist Movements? How can this AENM be best utilized for the survival of our cultural and racial identity, our civilization? Dear friends, for this and more, please welcome Norman Lodge. First of all, it's, it's a pleasure to be here again amongst comrades and friends to pursue our struggle, as Adrian said. Now, some of you will remember the last time I was here, just over a year ago, I presented three books. Francis Parker Yockey's Imperial, uh, my book, Imperium Europa, that followed it, years later, the Imperium Manifesto, with, which tackled the nitty-gritty of the concept of Imperium Europa, and today I'm privileged to present the fourth book in this growing awareness for this concept of Imperium Europa. The book is called Supra-Humanism, uh, Supra Supra-Humanism, European Man and the Regeneration of History. Now you will remember in the 60s, Francis Fukuyama, the end of history, that this is a reply that this is not the end of history at all. This is the beginning of the regeneration of history as we want it to be. Now, the author, under the pseudonym, I'll tell you why, Kurwanal, is a seasoned diplomat, years at the United Nations, represents a major European country, is serving his country diplomatically, uh, he's got a brilliant career, both in North and Latin America, uh, 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 all over Africa, and now is serving his great country in uh, Central European country. 
I can just tell you that it's west of the former Iron Canada, a major country, and he is a top diplomat there. He's not a German. I've only, I've only printed a few pages because of consequences. And I just want to give you the, because it can't be deflected, I've got a message, and I can't uh, be deflected very much. So i just give you the gist, the briefest gist of it. This is a Nietzschean book, through and through. That's why superhumanism. And the purpose of this book, really, is to define a series of concepts of ide or ideas and describe them in a precise and sharp, coherent way. Forge a sort of intellectual sword that may help us cutting through in the battle, in the battle for spiritual dominance and advance of self Everything depends, as I shall be talking later, on the outcome of this battle for spiritual dominance. Now, just. A sentence or two, the Roman civilization being forever the ideal on which the rebirth of Europe must be modeled. The idea of a European imperium or Reich must be revived. It is not important how the idea should manifest itself in the future and what statutory or legal forms it may assume. What counts is not the form, but the content of a new imperial idea, which excludes rabid nationalism and offers all European peoples a chance to nurture their uniqueness and yet also discharge their common duties. The synthesis of a spiritual Europe for the sake of the production or the enhancement of a higher breed of man this is what lies at the basis of our passion for U European unification under imperial Europa. So this is the book. I've been privileged to be asked to place a short forward to it, which I will do when I return to Malta. It's being edited by our Etoile, who's a professional editor. You remember Etoile, she came to speak here once. And, uh, I, uh, when, when this book is published within a month or so, we will certainly promote it on our website, Viva Malta. Unfortunately, I can't elaborate anymore because I have something, I have a message to give. Now, excuse me. It's my nervousness. <laughs> it's well. Now, this is a defining year, the end of 2012, a year of galactical importance for our planet, as I shall say, as I shall explain. Now, every present political movement chooses its predecessor we are carried forward on the shoulders of previous intellectual giants. Glaring examples, Yoki, Francis Parker Yoki. He had Spengler. He was a Spenglerian. Spengler had Goethe and Nietzsche. Nietzsche had Schopenhauer. And so on and so forth. Now, so every political movement chooses its predecessors. Spiritual, high cultural, political. But what is important is not what the choice has been, who the present political movement chooses, but the why. Why was the choice made? That is the crucial question. Now we of Imperium Europa, we do have our predecessors. 
after careful choice. And we have chosen on one side Friedrich Nietzsche and Francis Paul Pumpkin. Two pillars on which the whole concept of Imperium Europa stands. Friedrich Nietzsche, let's face it, the last great European, truly European thinker, didn't agree to what we call better nationalism. He wasn't even attacked Germans unfairly, to say the truth. Nietzsche, pure, distilled, a blinding light. His Zarathustra, an affirmation of the great yes, yes to suffering, yes to pain, yes to tribulations, yes, if death is life, then let's have it again. A great affirmation, a great optimism. We need Nietzsche. We need his hope. His great affirmation. Now, Friedrich Nietzsche interpreted nature's laws as they are. As they are. He did not transpose petty morality onto a god make God a mirror image of ourselves. It didn't do that. Nietzsche understood exactly what nature's laws are. Inexorable laws. Immutable laws that can never change. Laws that are beyond good and evil. Nietzsche. Now, Imperium Europa is rooted, the Imperium side, the masculine side, is rooted in these immutable laws. While the feminine side, the dominion, evolves, changes, adapts. But the Imperium laws, the masculine side, with those prerogatives, my previous, my friend, number, they can never change. They are eternal laws. Why? Because the cosmos is what it is. On the other side, we have Jokic. The political philosopher, the political activist par excellence. He gave his life for his political passion. His great yes to imperial in 1946. Unimaginable. What a man. What a star. In 1946, with Julia, desolate, lying prostitute under the heels of Bolshevism and finance capitalism to come out with this idea of a great man. Now, we have to admit that it was the two fascisms, Germany and Italy, that applied the Nietzsche philosophy to politics. Nobody had. They tried. They did. They started. It was after all they did a start in a few years. But they tried to adopt Nietzsche philosophy to politics. In 1946, Yoki implemented Nietzsche's philosophy to post-war politics. Now, in 2012, we of Imperium Europa are implementing, putting into practice the thoughts of both these, our predecessors. Armed with the hindsight, insight and foresight, we sail this troubled, this troubled political world, this shabby modernity, this terminally ill culture of ours, corroded, corrupted by those whom Jockey described as the culture distorters. Nietzsche asks, what is the most beautiful thing in life? To live dangerously. A hunger for the forever out of reach, our ideals, an aristocratic 
in the sense of spirit and character an aristocratic radical revolution that is about to shake the world. We are the true free spirits, the true libertarians, not liberals, <laughs> focused, disciplined, inured to hardship, ingrained <laughs> against luxury and miserableness. We do not need to ingratiate ourselves with anybody. We do not need to fear upsetting anybody. We are the radical racialist right. Revolutionary reactionaries. We must simply be ourselves. We were the heirs of both our predecessors, Friedrich Nietzsche and Francis Barney. Now, I am often asked, but no, is it true this business about 2012 that this will be the start of the white man's regeneration, revival, resurgence? Is this true? Exactly the same question what Nietzsche was asked about the Italian characters, those who read Nietzsche, understand me. And he used to ask him in the pre period of lucidity after Zarathustra, he used to ask him frequently, but is it true? Is it, uh, and he used to respond, he used to respond, it does not matter whether it is true or not, but what if it is? What if it is? It would change one's life. Every second becomes a striving, a self-overcoming. Every moment assumes an inestimable preciousness. The young monk in Tibet walking, meditating, Bundu, followed by a huge Siberian tiger. Cornered at the edge of a cliff, he leans and hangs on to a cherry branch sprouting out of the sheer cliff face while the, while the tiger yawns and looks at him. <laughs> and his, his hands are aching. And then, at the last moment, he plucks a cherry. How sweet did that cherry taste. <laughs> See, every moment becomes an eternity. And so it is with our belief that this year is a year of galactical importance for our race. What the Italians call la svolta, the uschlag, the, the breakthrough, the breakthrough. Our belief that this small cycle about to end will give way to much larger cycle. Kaliuga to Kritaliuga. Cosmic cycles, inner circles, introducing ever larger underwise. This belief of ours, of Imperium Europa, will change our perception of the struggle, will change our pessimism into optimism, defeatism into a messianic certainty of our final victory. Conviction that the hidden enemy, that enemy of mankind, as Voltaire described them, now at the zenith of their power, 2012, the end of it, December, will, will be the start of their demise. We have to blare our truth from rooftops. Once the enemy is exposed, spotlighted, with the full glare of truth being steadily on him, then he can be fought and vanquished, neutralized, cauterized. All will soon be possible for us as we work together under the unifying idea of Imperium Abroad. We are going to forge an Imperium of regions and free regions and peoples, conserving their traditions, customs, dialects, regional laws, whatever. They will be truly free. 
two white rings north and south of the equator embracing one billion whites. This biological aristocracy that gave the world everything. We will clean up our heartlands and repopulate them with our best sons and daughters. We will usher our golden dawn. All else, all the present problems in the dominium sphere will pale into insignificance. We in Malta, towards the end of this year, 2012, we are going to launch Imperium Europa. Twelve men from the, all over the white world, the best, will congregate on our island. On a specific day, at a specific hour, at a sacred space, a sacred spot, pre-Christian, some 6,000 to 12,000 years old. Unknown to the authorities, but discovered by our archaeological friends. We will meet there and launch the Imperium. Now in Malta we have two types of temples. Luna, feminine, the cult of the great mother, Yen. And the previous solar veneration. And it is here in this last temples, one of them, it is in a solar temple that we shall meet and launch the Imperium. This sacred Aryan territory, Melita, the last remaining tip of the former Atlantis, a huge island, three times the size of Sicily, stretching from the Malta, which was the highest point, right down, for those of you who know, of course, the Sahara Desert, right to Timbuktu, was a vast ocean. If one digs, if one digs the Sahara Desert, in the Sahara Desert, at a hundred feet, one turns up all sorts of fossils, whales, sharks, dolphins, seals, you name it. The whole area was, a, was an ocean, you see. And Malta's the last remaining tip of that. And Malta we intend eventually to make it, to make it the center of a nature-oriented belief for those predisposed. Linking them as antenna, linking them to the cosmos, to Godhood. Now, Melita, the tip, the spiritual focal point, the unmovable center, the pinnacle peak, nella massima tranquillità, nell'occhio del ciclone, in the most serenity and tranquility in the eye of the cyclone. There, the unmovable point in the middle of the cosmic swirling swastika. Now, the Maltese cross, the eight-pointed cross, is actually two swastikas joined together. One is destroverse, one sinistrophers joined together. As the great Serrano would say, what the cosmic synchronicity augering success to the launching and implementation of Imperium Europa. But like everything great, the Imperium will be born in silence and darkness. A spiritual event of momentous importance <coughs> will affect everything. A spiritual transfiguration, a mystical rite is about to happen. Now, our nationalist friends, wherever they are, may not understand us. They are digging a little furrow in their respective countries, fighting elections, what we do after all in Malta, fighting, uh, contesting elections, local elections, and, and 
know that. But we will give a cosmic vision to the fight. This fight that started eons ago, millions of light years away in the past, millions upon millions of miles of, 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 of lightning speed away. This start is an age-old fight between two gods and is being carried on on this tiny speck. Our Earth, our Gaia. It is a fight, I said, between two gods. An open god against that incarnated satanic spirit, the creation of the Demiurge. It's an ongoing fight. Now, to get back to politics. Many nationalists, genuine nationalists, want to get out of the EU. I was at the Alliance of European Conference last month. Last month in Milan, there were 200 delegates from all over Europe. And I was glad that there was such enthusiasm, such a love for our Europe, for our race, and everything great, very vibrating. But on the other side, when you see some speakers who are representative of the AEMM on their governing body, and they want to get out of Europe, collecting signatures to get out of you. But are we politically mad? Can't you see the irony of it all, the incoherence, the contradiction? Get out of Europe now when it's about to collapse in our hands, right? We will take over Europe very soon, not get out of it. They've done all the donkey work for us. Now, let them be. They've done the donkey work. Now we'll give it them spirituality, high culture, our high culture, and then no direction. And we'll take over, that's it. Not get out of it. Not get out. Now, <coughs> this AE and men movement, the chairman is cognition, very respectable historian. I think I was accused of Holocaust and I have a lot nice man to be Now this AEMM is soon to become a misnomer, the Alliance of National Movements. In 2014, the coming MEP elections for Europe, the regions will outnumber the nation states. The regional representatives will vastly outnumber the, 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 the Christian hypocrites and the squalid socialists. I know regions, I've met so many regional le le leaders, so many of them, and they're fielding five, six candidates every region. Now there are 300 regions in Europe from Ireland to Lithuania. So it's ours. As I had predicted in one of my previous talks, those who remember it or saw it on me, I used to say the regions will vote for us, not for the national government, you see, but for the regional government. And that is the great surprise, the surprise we are going to give the gangsters, the surprise of their miserable lives. So AENM is a misnomer because the book then in more regions than nations. So I am in Brussels as we are confident this time that we will be in Malta because there's a growing awareness by people that have lost complete faith in, in our politicians like everyone else. So I will probably be in Brussels in 2014 and I will urge the AE and them to change its name to Norfa memory of the Al-Qaeda who coined it in the way back years ago. Your Qaeda. Nova Europa, New Europe, we look to the future, not to the past. We want to take over Europe and our countries and our peoples. We don't want to apologize for anybody. 
Now then, this will, this, when we are there in Europe, Nova Europa, 60, 100 deputies, we don't know, it's an imponderable question, there will be a, a continuation of the dissolution of the nation states. Artificial lines on the map, Belgium. It's already, it's, if you go to Belgium, you <coughs> See the Flemish and the Hanu, there's a dividing line. So, there will, with this uh, financial crisis, racial riots, and so on and so forth, there will be a continuous eroding of the nation states. And the old regions, not the new regions, those circular regions, the old regions, as old as man himself, they will come out. All protected by the strongest imperium the world has ever seen. A planetary imperium for Europe it's only and none else. An imperium, an imperium led by an elite of proven individuals who will galvanize Europe an elite worthy of our two uh, uh, predecessors, Friedrich Nietzsche and Francis Barker. We will save our peoples. We will hold high the banner for the white race, Imperium Europa. Amen.